Thanks for watching my Sega 12 conversion series. In this video, we'll be installing the new fire control group. Alright, so I'm using the Tromax trigger. I got all of my supplies from Carolina Shooter Supply. And you can see here I've already got the trigger, the disconnect spring, uh, put in place here. So now we're going to go ahead and put this into the firearm. I'm going to use the factory main spring. And then we're going to take the hammer, just like this. Face of it is here. Legs are pointed down. We're going to wrap it, push it down, and then we're going to take the main spring legs and wrap them over each other. Probably easier to do on a flat surface, not a rug. <laughs> See, they're like this over top. And then take your tie strap and get yourself situated. This came loose on me last time, so getting a tight wrap on there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and drop the trigger in. Get it lined up with one of the old access pin slots. And uh, just as a note, you don't want to slide the sleeve all the way over yet because we've got to use some, we've got to get some parts down in there. But you can take one of the access pins, line that up, and get that started. Once the access pin starts to poke out just a little bit there, let me go ahead and get your bolt hold open lever, and drop that in. And we need it just like that for the time being. Try putting a little bend on the back leg here, see if that helps at all. I'm going to try to do this as best as possible for you to see. I found that this grip seems to give me the best hold on the spring, but you've got to catch the back piece on the bolt hold open arm and then press down. If you lift the trigger group up, get that access pin through the spring. Got to get the access pin all the way through now. Voila. That was tough. Now that we have the trigger and the bolt hold open in place, going to install the safety. You may have to take a little bit off the top here for the Sega 12. And you will need to move the bolt hold open out of the way in order to get the safety through there. She goes. Alright, now we're going to reinstall the hammer. Make sure when you're inserting it that the coils don't uh, come off the bar. I find it twisting that way seems to be the best. And then you will need to get the Bolt catch down for you to be able to slide the access pin through. And that popped back up. Let's push that back down. Using a small screwdriver so you can see, but a uh, bigger one will definitely help. There we go. Now we're going to insert the access pin retaining spring. I'm not using a retaining plate. That is also an option. Uh, you can do your own research to figure out how that works. There are lots of videos on that. I didn't find many on this. So to install this, it's going to sit along the left side of the receiver, the short end down. This loop will be on top of the back access pin and then what you'll have to do is depress the front end the larger end 
underneath the front access pin, which you can see right below my screwdriver there. So I've actually found the best way to get this started is to use a combination of your fingers and a screwdriver. So you get the smaller arm under the first pin. And once the longer pin, longer part of the pin, or spring I should say, is it the main spring, push it down with your thumb to get it to clear that inside rivet. And then use your thumb to hold it down, get a screwdriver, and push it through. Helps to have steel fingers. that. Now what mine's doing is getting caught on the spring so I need to keep it in place while pushing it down. There we go. And that twist tie is almost ready to come off. That would have been a bad day for my fingers. Just want to make sure the access pin is all the way in. There you go. Just want to ensure that that longer arm is entirely under and the access pin is fully seated. You may have to tap it in while keeping pressure down on the longer spring uh, spring end. Now with that in place, we can go ahead and remove our tie straps on the spring, main spring. Watch your fingers, gents. Use a pair of pliers to let those down. And you want to make sure they're sitting properly on the back of the tr trigger. So they should go over the sleeve and then the arms will rest over top, let me get a better camera angle, a little bit further looking down. Now the moment of truth, we test the trigger here. Put your thumb on the hammer, pull the trigger, keep the trigger finger depressed. So obviously the hammer works, let's see if it resets. Again, keep your uh, trigger finger pressed on the trigger. Set it down and it resets. And we're done. Thanks for watching part 3 of my Sega 12 conversion series. Click here to see part 4 which covers the installation of the pistol grip and trigger guard. Please be sure to rate and comment on the video you just viewed. For more videos on guns, gear, bushcraft and hunting, subscribe by clicking the channel icon. You can also see a link to my last video as well as to my other social media. Make sure to like No More Op 4 on Facebook, follow me on Instagram and see detailed posts on my blog. Thanks for subscribing to No More Op 4's YouTube channel.